Welcome to this slideshow, the first in a series dealing with construction of the Hume Dam commencing in November 1919. Construction continued until the dam's official opening in 1936. The Murray-Darling Basin occupies about 15% of Australia's area. It is of huge economic significance supporting an agricultural area important for a large range of farm products, including cereal crops, fruit production and grazing. The men of Human Hovel's expedition of 1824 were the first Europeans to the country now occupied by Lake Hume. They arrived at the river at a spot close to what is now the western end of Hume Street, Albury, on November 16, 1824. They called the river the Hume. We are looking at an 1879 photo taken from Western Hill in Albury, showing the bend in the river behind the current Albury swimming pool. The red arrow marks the approximate spot where the party met the river. The yellow arrow indicates the hovel tree, marked by William Hovel. And the blue arrow points to the wharf and crane, built in 1871 to support the river trade. The wharf remained a sad relic of a once thriving trade route until it was demolished in 1896. Returning now to the 1824 expedition, at this spot the river was about 80 yards, or roughly 73 metres, wide at the time so too wide to cross safely. A team was dispatched downstream looking for a suitable crossing place, but returned without success. Heading upstream, the party crossed the junction of the Murray and Mittermitter rivers. This is the only photo I have seen of the junction, with the Murray flowing from the top and the Mitter coming in from the right. Just beyond the junction, they found that the river narrowed to about 40 yards, or 36 metres. And on November 20, 1824, they successfully crossed into what was to become Victoria. Hume later commented that they crossed where the rocks run brokenly across the river a short distance above the mouth of the Mittermitter. These rocks can be seen in the photo taken in early 1919, when the area was being surveyed before construction of the Hume Dam commenced. That crossing point is now beneath Lake Hume, and the monument adjacent to the Hume Weir Village store attracts attention to the spot. From the mid-1850s, colonial friction produced decades of delay in utilising the waters of the Murray. There was much debate between the three colonies involved, South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales. South Australia wanted a guaranteed flow for navigation and stable water supply. Victoria saw building water storage for irrigation as their priority and the river is in New South Wales, so their colonial authorities wanted to maintain control. Despite a number of conferences and three royal commissions, little changed until Federation in 1901. In April 1902, a conference was held in Corowa and attended by representatives of all three colonial governments and Prime Minister Edmund Barton representing the Commonwealth Government. The outcome? An interstate royal commission was ordered to inquire into the conservation and distribution of the waters of the Murray and its tributaries for the purpose of irrigation, navigation and water supply. In December 1902, the Royal Commission resolve that 1. Navigation must be provided for by construction of weirs and locks. 2. 
water supply was to be regulated by a proposed Cumbaroona Reservoir with water to belong in shares between New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Three, provision must be made for a large supply of water maintained down the main stream. And it was noted that it is the duty of the Commission to report any pollution of the waters of the river. But there was no mention of the ecology of the river. A capital works program involved building weirs and locks on the Murray River from Blanchetown in South Australia to Echuca and up to Hay on the Murrumbidgee River and a major storage on the Upper Murray with Lake Victoria near Wentworth to be utilised as a storage basin. Then very little happened for several years. In April 1914, there was an agreement between the Prime Minister and the Premiers of New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia with regard to the Murray Waters. The agreement stating, with a view to the economical uses of the waters of the River Murray and its tributaries for irrigation and navigation, and to the reconciling of the interests of the Commonwealth and the riparian states, it is resolved that an agreement between the Commonwealth and the states of New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia be entered into. This agreement was formalised on September 9, 1914, with the, with the Prime Minister and three Premiers establishing the River Murray Waters Agreement and the River Murray Commission. This entailed one member from each state with the federal appointee as chairman. The River Murray Commission had a brief to create and administer a scheme to construct a major storage on the Upper Murray and 31 weirs and locks on the Lower Murray and Murrumbidgee rivers. All decisions had to be unanimous. Responsibilities included acquisition of land and approval of all state projects. The cost of the works to be borne equally by the four governments. The states had responsibility to design and construct all works in their jurisdictions. This led to the River Murray Waters Act of 1915. 25 sites were considered. Initially, Cumbaroona, east of Albury and well above the junction of the Murray and Mitter rivers was the preferred site but test bores in that area needed to drill to a depth of 30 metres to find solid bedrock, and that was considered much too deep. Just below the junction of the Murray and Mitter Mitter rivers, solid rock was found at a depth of 10 metres. So in October 1918, it was decided that this site was the best location for the dam. The photo shows surveyors at work once the site had been chosen. That looks like Bethanga Gap in the profile of hills behind the surveyor in the water. The then photo here is from a point close to the present Humeweir village. It gives some idea of the good farming country that was to be flooded. The now photo was taken from about the same spot. And looking across the valley, that's the Bathanga Gap in the background. Much of the flooded land in the previous photo was owned by the Evans family. The bottom red arrow indicates the junction of the two rivers, the top arrow the future site of the Hume Dam spillway. The left-hand illustration is an aerial shot of Lake Hume, with the blue overlay being Evans Land. That image is then overlaid with the map from the previous slide. In 2021, the Evans family still owns the land not flooded by the lake. The photo on screen now is from the Murray-Darling Basin Authority. The Mitter River is entering from top right and the Murray from the left. The yellow arrow indicates the original course of the Murray River. The red arrow shows the man-made course of the river. We'll talk about the importance of that shortly. The 
embankment follows the line of bedrock below, with the bend following an almost right angle turn in the granite rock. Apart from the main wall, there are two other smaller embankments, one of which is out of sight. We now look at a few slides of the ceremony on November 28, 1919, when the first sod was turned. The top photo is looking downhill from the New South Wales side, with the post indicating the, the future position of the spillway. In the bottom photo, guests are gathering for the ceremony, not suitably attired for a hot late November day. The flags are of the three states, South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales, and the Australian flag. Another view of the crowd waiting for the ceremony to begin, with the dais draped in Union Jack flags. This is a view looking back from the Victorian side. Here, the Governor-General, Sir Ronald Munro Ferguson, turns the first sod, followed by three cheers. This illustration outlines how construction was to proceed. The first stage was removal of the lower part of the hill rising from the New South Wales Riverbank and excavation of the new man-made course for the river that will be employed later. Much of the material excavated is to be used to construct the first coffer dam. It's outlined here in red. Its function is to hold backwater from the river while construction of the New South Wales end of the spillway starts. Once the northern end of the spillway reaches a certain stage, the second coffer dam, here outlined in orange, is constructed. It will hold back the river from its natural course, redirecting the water through the man-made course so that construction can start on the southern side of the spillway. Note the railway line to the quarry, the junction of the two rivers, and the human hovel crossing spot. The final slide in this part one highlights how the work was done. Horses did much of the work moving earth around. It is estimated that at times over 500 horses were on site. Steam from the burning of coal powered the electrical generating plant the steam shovels and crushers, and the locomotives. And of course, manpower. Estimates of workforce numbers vary widely, but by the mid-1920s, at the peak of construction, there were about 1,200 men employed. This ends part one of Hume Dam construction. Part two will deal with construction of the spillway.